When factoring, it's helpful to be able to notice some special cases. After we start seeing the patterns repeatedly, you can jump and factor a lot faster rather than sitting and trying to figure out how to factor the thing. So in section 5.5, we're going to look at two different special cases that you'll see a lot when we're working with factoring. And the first one being a perfect square trinomial. It's a lot of words, but you'll see what we mean. So some trinomials are squares of binomials. So what does that mean? I've got a binomial here, two terms, and I'm squaring it. If we were to FOIL it all out, we would come out to x squared plus 10x plus 25. A trinomial has three terms. So some trinomials are the square of a binomial. We'll always factor like this, and we want to be able to notice um, what are the requirements for that to be able to happen, because that'll help us to be able to jump faster to factoring. So a trinomial that is a square of a binomial, we call them perfect square, perfect square trinomials, because it's a trinomial that can be factored as perfect square. Pretty, pretty intuitive. So, if we actually FOIL out a generic case, a plus b and a minus b, these are the trinomials that result. So, looking at the pattern, what can we notice? In each of these cases, the first term and the last term are both positive. So, a squared, b squared, b squared, a squared. Those are all positive. So we need that to happen. And based on the sign here, we need the same sign showing up on the middle term. End ones are always going to be positive. The middle sign has to match what, we're, what we have in our binomial there. Okay. Other thing to notice, the middle term is always 2 times the first times the second. So 2 times each chunk of my binomial, each term there. So 2 times a times b. Same down here, 2 times a times b, what's involved in our binomial. So if we can start recognizing this pattern, if this pattern shows up, I can automatically factor to a perfect square you know, binomial over here. Make things go a lot faster. So let's just see. If a number can be multiplied by itself to get a number n, then c is a square root of n. So for example, 3 is a square root of 9, because I can take 3 times 3, or 3 squared, and I get to 9. Okay, but it's only a square root, one of them, we have another option. We'll discuss it later. So. We want to be able to start recognizing this pattern. Let's try a few. We're not going to factor it. We just want to determine, is this trinomial a perfect square trinomial? Does it fit all of these requirements? So let's see. First check. Are my first and last terms positive? Yes, in this case, they are. So x squared and 9 are positive. That's good. And they have to be squares, like we can see here. My first term squared and my last term squared. So they are squares, x and 3. So x squared and 9 are squares. So we satisfy this requirement and that requirement. And now we just have to check the middle. If I take 2, out of 6, what am I left with there? So if I start to break that up into 2 times some factors, I'm looking at 2 times 3 times x. So we can break it up in that way. And is it a perfect square trinomial? Yes, because I've got 2 times my first term, so one of the factors there and one of the factors here. That gives us our middle. So, in reality, yes, it's a perfect square. And how does it factor? So, taking the square root or looking at one factor of my first term, that goes here. 
my sign was positive, so a positive goes there. And 9. What is its square root? 3. So we can check. If I have 2 times the first times the second, do I get that middle term? Yes. So we don't have to justify every single time as we try to factor these faster. Once we start recognizing the pattern, we can jump from there to there. Save you a lot of time. So let's see. Let's look at this one. Next, is that a perfect square trinomial? So just running through the checks. Positive, positive, so that's satisfied. Square, not a square. I can't take some number and square it and get 11. So this one isn't, no, not a perfect square, perfect square trinomial, or PST. Perfect square trinomial. So we don't have to write that out every single time. PST. Okay. So, take those next three problems. Determine whether each is a perfect square trinomial. If you're comfortable with it, factor it as well. If you're not, just talk about if it is or not. So in the first, what can we see? I've got positive, positive, a square and a square. And if we break up the middle into two times some factors, I'm going to be left with 4 and x. And I can check, is x the square root of x squared? Mm -hmm. Is 4 the square root of 16? Yes. So this one is a perfect square trinomial. And how is it going to factor? x plus 4 squared. Okay, next. Got perfect square, perfect square, and they're both positive. Can I break up the middle term into 2 times the square root and the square root? So let's see. If I take negative 2 out of 12, I'm left with 6t. But 6 is not the square root of 4. So no. Not a perfect square trinomial. It's not going to factor like this. And for part C, we can't really tell when it's in that order, so we need to rewrite it. Negative x squared plus 10x plus 25. So right off the bat, as we're looking after we rewrite the order, I've got a negative term automatically not. It needs to be positive. So no, not a perfect square trinomial. We couldn't jump to factoring quickly there. All right, so we've got those foundations. We can check and eventually we'll start working towards actually factoring those. So let's do just that. Let's start practicing. So in the first example, just to check and make sure that it's a perfect square trinomial, we've got positive, positive, and I could break up 6 into 2 times 3x. So we just have to check is 3 the square root of 9? Yes. And is x the square root of x squared? Yes. So we know that this is going to factor into what binomial squared? Square root of the first one, and I've got a positive in the middle, and square root of the last one. Done. Save us a lot of time rather than guessing and checking until we come upon that answer. Okay. Next, out of order. So the first thing we want to do is switch it around. So we can discuss properly. We've got positive, positive, and their squares. And can we break up the, whoop, I need, a, I need a one on there. Should have been 14. Now it'll work. Can we break up the middle term into two times the square root of each of these? So if I take negative two out of 14, I'm left with seven x. So yes, square root of the first, square root of the second. So I know that this is going to factor into the binomial x minus 7. And if you're not sure, what can you always do with these problems? Actually write it out, x minus 7, x minus 7, foil it, and check and make sure you get back to the original. If you think you've made any mistakes with these, you can always foil and check. All right, so something a little bit bigger now, but the concept is still the same. So, in the beginning, what is my uh, square root of 16x squared? Sometimes it's helpful to break it down. So, 4x, that quantity squared, will give me 16x squared. And 25 is a perfect square of 5. So, I want to check and make sure that I can break up this middle term 
into 2 times 4x times 5. So let's see. If I take 2 out of 40, I'm left with 20, which can be broken up into 4 and 5. So, did we satisfy it? Is it a perfect square trinomial? Yes. How is it going to factor? We've got a binomial. The square root of the first term is 4x. We have subtraction in the middle, and my last term, 5. And again, you can check if you're not so confident with it. Write it out FOIL. Okay. Next one, we have some larger powers than what we've seen before. But let's see if it qualifies. So again, if I want some quantity squared to end up to be T4, I need T2 on the inside. And 100 is a square of 10. So can I break up 20t squared into 2 times t squared times 10? Let's see. Plus 2 times 10t gets us there. So yes, it is a perfect square trinomial. And how does it factor? The first one, and I have addition in the middle, and the last one, 10. Get it if you're not sure. Boil it out, make sure it's correct. And for part E, we're dealing with some large numbers. And the first thing that we should always do with these problems is see if there's anything in common that we can factor out of all of them. So looking between them, I can take out 1m. And between the constants, we can take out a 3. So we'll do that first and see what results. So 75 divided by 3 is 25, but I'm left with m squared. A perfect square and it's positive, looking promising. 210, if I divide that by 3, I'm looking at 70. And I took out one of the m's. And last, 147 divided by 3 is 49. And I took out the m, so I don't have any left. So we've got positive, positive, perfect square, perfect square. Can we break up the middle into each of these terms? So if I take 2 out of 70, what are we looking at? 35m, and we can break up 35 into 5 and 7. So yeah, we've got a perfect square trinomial, and we can't forget what we factored out already. He still needs to be tagging along. But my binomial, what does it look like? The square root of the first, so we've got 5m, and I've got a positive in the middle, and the square root of the last one, 7. Okay. Again, you can always check and make sure. If you're not confident with these, foil it out, double check. Okay, so three for you to try. Go ahead and give them a shot. Say, are perfect square trinomials, factor them. First one had some pretty easy numbers to work with. One is prime, and it is a perfect square. And we've got a perfect square here. They're both positive, and we can rewrite the middle term in terms of the square root of each. So how did this one factor? It was a perfect square trinomial and the binomial involved, square root of the first. I've got a positive in the middle, square root of the last. X plus 1 squared gets us that trinomial. You can always foil and check. Second one, it's out of order, we need to rewrite it. T squared comes first in descending order. Positive, positive, perfect square, perfect square. We can rewrite the middle term as 2 times the square root of each. So it is a perfect square trinomial. And what is our binomial that's involved? Square root of the first one. I've got a positive in the middle. Square root of the last one, two. If you can start recognizing those patterns, it's so much faster than trying to guess and check your way uh, to that, those factors. And the last one, common between everything that we can take out is Z3. So after we do that, we're left with 4z2 minus 20z plus 25. So we need to carry along that greatest common factor on the outside of everything. And we qualify. I've got positive, positive, perfect square, perfect square. And we can rewrite negative 20 as negative 2 times square root, square root. Gets us there. So how does it factor? Square root of the first one, 2z. I've got subtraction in the middle, and the square root of the last one, 5. And we can always check, plug it back in, make sure that it is correct. Foil it out. 